encyclical, Dearly beloved, each of you is aware of the sacred efforts being made by our Archdiocese to maintain our St Andrews Theological College, which has been functioning for 32 years now. Unfortunately, however, the number of students who are studying in order to be ordained is not satisfactory. Therefore, on today's special day of Pentecost, we are to remind all the faithful that there is no ambition more sacred for every Christian family than to try to guide children from a young age and later to send those who wish to study theology at the college which you have all continued to support until today. The parish priest is therefore asked to remind the parents on the occasion of Pentecost when while kneeling we call upon the outpouring of the Holy Spirit that in every family the inclination towards priesthood should be encouraged. We pray that the enlightenment of the Holy Spirit on this great feast of Pentecost will ensure for us a more practical and warmer inclination of our youth towards the priesthood at a time when all theological co colleges of other Christian denominations are also experiencing an unprecedented crisis. Thanking you for your cooperation in this regard, we invoke upon all the illumination of the Holy Spirit for every good work and remain with fervent fatherly prayers, Archbishop Stylianos, Primate of the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese of Australia. I believe that most of you understood what was being said in our, in our Archbishop's encyclical about the call to the priesthood and how appropriate as well that today's encyclical is to be read today on the day of Pentecost. The seal of everything which we celebrated, the seal of from begin, beginning from Holy and Great Lent up until today, Pentecost, where we pray for the pouring of the Holy Spirit on us. We know that Christ gave us his apostles and they were the ones that were first, they were the first to receive the Holy Spirit. And he gave them the authority to give, forgive men their sins. And then from them the apostles ordained other bishops and other priests. And those bishops ordained others. And the chain continues to this day. We call this the apostolic succession. In other words, there is an unbreakable link between, for example, my priesthood to the holy apostles. Nothing, uh, this chain has not broken. The apostles' hands touched and ordained the priests, and those priests or bishops ordained others and others and others. And this succession of the Holy Spirit of the apostles has continued within our church to this day. And it's important that our Archbishop reminds us of the importance of priesthood and how important this ministry actually is. Not long ago, probably back in our grandparents' times and their grandparents, they used to say a wish. They had an Ephim. And that if he is to their sons, may I kamarosi you, okay, or may I see you one day as a priest. That was their wish, that they would send at least one of their family members, one of their sons to go and become a priest. Because they knew that that person who was a priest, not only will he be respected in society, that's not why we become priests. But that person will continually pray and commemorate them and their family members, whether they were living or deceased, always in the divine liturgy. They understood the importance of that. And we know that through the priests, we always perform sacraments. As many bad things as we hear about them, as many wrong things as what we may do as priests, the sacraments continue to work through us. No one else can perform the sacrament of baptism. No one else can perform the sacrament 
of marriage, and that's important for people to understand, no one, not a civil celebrant, no one else can perform the sacrament of marriage, no one can perform the funeral sacrament, and any other services that we, which, are, which are sacraments of the church, more importantly confession and the Eucharist. That authority has been given to the priests and only the priests. And our struggle today is to maintain youth, young people, who will have that desire within them to become a priest. And here, let me tell you a few things. In order to become a priest, there must be some sort of canonical standards. For example, if the priest has committed certain sins, for example, fornication or murder, the person who wants to be ordained is not allowed to become a priest. The canons are very, very strict on that. For example, if he had fallen into some sort of sin and murder, he was involved in a war or something, that person is not allowed to be ordained a priest. And something even more specifically and more general, which I want all of you to know, those of you especially who have young sons, that if a, if a young man, if a man commits fornication, in other words, sleeps with someone before wedlock, he is not allowed to become a priest. And I'm saying this to you so that you can help your sons to preserve them, to remain clean and to remain chaste, especially the ones that you see who have a calling towards the priesthood. I know many young boys and see these young boys over here, I know that some of them have great potentials to become priests and it's my responsibility as their spiritual guide, as their spiritual father to help them now from a young age to preserve their life, to stay away from certain things, to stay away from certain people because more than likely one day these people, will, these young boys will be performing the sacraments, God willing. That's my prayer. My prayer is for them, these young boys who serve to me, to ser who serve me in the altar, one day I will be serving in the altar when they become priests. But you as parents need to help them as well. When you see that they have an inclination towards Christ, towards the church, and more, important, more importantly, towards the priesthood, do not stop them. Don't get in their way. Do not feed them the things that the world feeds them. Go and enjoy your, your life. Do what you have to do. You're young. Everybody else is doing it. No. Because the Lord wants us to be clean and to be chaste when we go into His holy altar. And this sacrifice that we give first comes from us. It comes from our soul. And so whether it's these boys or whether it's other children that you have, make sure that you preserve them, preserve their souls, keep them clean, preserve their eyes. And you are the ones that are to help them to do that and not to lead them astray. Today is the Feast of Pentecost, this great feast which we call now upon the Holy Spirit to come. Soon we will do the service, and this is why we finished the liturgy early, because we're going to do the Vesper service of Pentecost. And we're going to pray for the Holy Spirit to come down, and we're going to read these beautiful prayers. Most of you have got the booklet that you'll be able to follow along and understand as well. These are prayers that we don't just say so that things can sound beautiful, so that we can take up time in the church. These are prayers to be said, but also to be meant and to be felt within us. We should feel the fire of the Holy Spirit coming and enlightening all of us so that we can help and enlighten others. We know that there is, for example, when you want to attract something, you have to do it in a way when you know that the other thing is going to be enticed. For example, when a young man wants to, for example, uh, approach a young woman, 
He's not just going to approach him in any way and say, hey, you come here. He's going to use the sweetest words. He's going to use even dress and look in certain ways that's going to attract this young woman, for example. We, as Christians, want to attract something else, which is the Holy Spirit. That's what we want to do. That Holy Spirit, which has been given to all of us through holy baptism. All of us were given the Holy Spirit with the holy chrismation. After we're baptized in the water, the priest takes the holy chrism and chrismates all of us and says, the seal of the gift of the Holy Spirit, which is basically a stamp that's put on us and say, this now is a child of God. This is a child of the Holy Trinity and it is to walk in the way of the Holy Spirit. Now, as we get older and our sins begin to increase and we begin to do certain things which are against our nature as humans, what we do is we <coughs> expel the Holy Spirit from us. We take it away. Not that it doesn't want to be there, but what we do is we push it away. And what we want to do is to attract it to come further and closer to us. What are those things that push the Holy Spirit away from us? St. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 5, he says, <coughs> the things, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law, but the things that take away from the Spirit, the things do, that do not require, that bring us under the law and take away from us the Holy Spirit are the works of the flesh and they are adultery, fornication, uncleanliness, lewdness, idolatry, <coughs> sorcery, hatred, contentions, jealousies, outbirths of wrath, anger, the one that I have to, uh, the one that I have to try and control, selfish ambitions, dissensions, heresies, envy, murder, and drunkenness, rivalries and the like. These are all the things that expel from us or push the Holy Spirit away from us and is not active within us. What we want to do is ask for the grace of Christ or the grace of the Holy Spirit. We want to be closer to God. And what does Saint Paul say? He says that the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, sacrifice, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. They are the fruits of the Spirit. They are what attract God to us. They are what, when we act in that certain way, say, God, I truly want you in my life. I want to be led by the Holy Spirit. Not some words that we say during prayer. It's not the words that we say during prayer. Okay? It's how we live those words in prayer. It's how we live our every single day, our everyday life. And Saint Seraphim of Sarov says, Acquire the spirit of peace, and a thousand souls around you shall be saved. So by attracting the Holy Spirit to ourselves, then we are helping so many other people around us. And this is how we have to live as Christians. You know what? We shouldn't have to tell anyone that we are Christians. People should automatically know without even asking us that we are Christians. They should be able to sense. They should be able to see. They should be able to feel something different. Why? Because we should have within us the Holy Spirit that should be active within us by using and living by all these things that the scriptures tell us, that St. Paul tells us. All it does is require a little bit of effort from us, a little bit of struggle, a little bit of time, prayer, fasting. If the church says to you that we fast Wednesdays and Fridays, then fast Wednesdays and Fridays if there's no reason for you not to fast, to spend quality time with Christ, with God in prayer. The way we approach others, 
the way we react to certain situations, the way we deal with others, our sins, whether they're committed and people see them or whether we're committed and no one knows those sins except for God himself. All of those things are what hinder and bother the Holy Spirit for coming within us. So we go to the sacrament of confession and we confess and we humble ourselves because humility is what brings the Holy Spirit in us. When we, are, when we learn to be humble and when we humble ourselves, then that's when we know we have the Holy Spirit. And then there's other experiences of the Holy Spirit which cannot be described with words. And I know that a lot of you, especially those of you who practice your faith, know what it means to be touched by grace, to be touched by the Holy Spirit. No words can describe that. No sermon can tell you what it means to be touched by the grace of the Holy Spirit. It's something which we have to experience for ourselves. And watch that once the Holy Spirit touches us, okay, and we are filled by this grace, then we don't want anything else but to stay in the grace of Christ. So brothers and sisters, pray that Christ's love attracts us to the Holy Spirit and that we activate, activate that Holy Spirit which was given to us through holy baptism so that we can be lights of salvation and lights to the world. Amen.